Hey there! Previously I showed you how to farm Zulguru for mounts and reputation, but that's not the only thing that's gonna be affected by Cataclysm. So let's talk about Satek Horse and Reigns of Raymond Lord, commonly known as Anzu because it drops from boss that looks like. Little bit of trivia before we start, Anzu is secret boss in TBC dungeon called Satek Horse. To summon Anzu, druid who finished quite lengthy and lore intensive quest chain, and obtained Essence infused Moonstone and has it in their inventory, in Kinche bag, is required to click on specific stand in the second to last room in Satek Horse on heroic difficulty. No other boss is required to be killed, and if done correctly after short animation and RP, Anzu should spawn and be killable. According to Wowhead, the Anzu or the Reigns of Raven Lord has about 1.6% drop chance, which I believe in reality is probably just 1%, as that's where most rare mounts tend to be. And lastly, as Heroic TBC Dungeon, you will need to buy Ochenai Keef from Reputation Quartermaster Nakodu in Lower City in Shatrath. To be able to access this key in first place, you need to be at least revered with Lower City Reputation first. The reputation requirement might have been lowered to Honored. Both my Druid and Hunter are exalted and other characters neutral with this reputation, so I cannot test this myself, but I vaguely remember it being a thing. Anyway, it does not really matter that much, because when Cataclysm comes, I believe the need for any keys and druid specific item will be removed altogether and everyone should be able to just walk in on heroic difficulty and summon Anzu. And to just finish up and have everything in one place altogether, the reset of this instance happens daily, so you can do it once per day per character in Cataclysm and once per day per druid in Wrath of the Lich King and Burning Crusade. Now, you might not know which one of these instances is actually Satek Horse, and for that it's the one facing west of the map. Or just follow the path my character is taking on the screen right now to locate the dungeon. Once inside I recommend to not bother with any of the mobs and or bosses. And yeah sure the loot is quite decent and can yield decent gold per hour, but there are way better like gold farms anyway. If you are stealth class, make sure to utilize it and avoid all unnecessary combat. If you are night elf, hunter or any other class, class excuse me, or race that can get out of combat, use it to your advantage. The fight is not worth it and some of these mobs, even though low level, can still dish out some serious damage. Once in the second to last room, I would highly recommend clearing every single mob inside. Technically you don't have to clear the pack on the right entrance side and left exit side, but I had the spawn of Anzu aggro these in past from time to time, and it almost always led to certain wipe as these mobs kinda hurt. For the special abilities of these trash mobs, the prophets are fearing, timeless criers healing and warhawks are stunning. Uh, the rest have some like movement debuffs and like different combat debuffs, but nothing that can screw you big time. My order of dealing with these mobs is first I kill prophets, that's like number one priority. Then timeless criers, so the fight doesn't drag for eternity, and lastly the warhawks, and then anything else. Now, before talking about the Anzu fight, let's talk about classes. As of making this video, I'm still in Votlock, so the only viable solo able class is Druid. Out of which I'm pretty sure trying to solo this boss as Resto Druid would be insanity, but probably doable just for the sheer amount of healing and mana regen of this pack. Boomy or Balanced Druid is probably the weakest one when it comes to survival, but might make up for it with the raw damage output. Just keep hots on you the whole time and you should be fine. I solo it as Boomy with Naxxramas gear, but it was pain in the ass, so switching to Feral make it way easier. Right now, basically any Feral tank can do it without even trying, and I'm convinced even Feral DPS when switching to Bear won't have any trouble killing the boss. Right now, in the video on the background, I am literally using PvP gear on my Druid, and some res uh, like uh, Resto slash Boomy gear as well, because I'm too lazy to farm the rest of the gear. Anyway, just make sure, when you are caster, to dispel the annoying magic explosion if you are having troubles and are soloing it, and get rid of any trash mobs that are spawned, and you should be fine. Anyway, for Kata, this boss fight should be breeze for every single class as level and stats gap will increase drastically. And for TBC, if someone playing, if someone is still playing TBC and is watching this, I honestly don't think you can solo this boss. I'm pretty sure party or at, of at least tank and healer and ideally DPS is needed, and one of these has to be hunter. Uh, excuse me, druid. Anyway, for the fight, Anzu fight is separate into two stages that are being switched in between. During first phase, Anzu is just gonna attack you, 
and if you are caster, he will periodically cast spell bomb, which is curse that makes part of your mana explode, damaging your health, kicking, and briefly stunning you whenever you cast any spell while under this curse. Beside that, he'll be using rip ability, which is physical damage over time, and auto attack to directly attack you. Nuke Anzo as hard as possible while also decursing yourself, if possible, during this phase. Because in second phase, Anzo is gonna sp spawn a bunch of weak mobs that are gonna attack you while the boss cannot be damaged at all for roughly one minute, as well as casting five second stuns on you. Anzu can still cast the spell bomb in this phase, but my experience, in my experience, it's way less often. When this phase ends, it returns to phase 1 and you can return to attacking Anzu and if you fail to kill any of the spawned mobs, they will remain and keep attacking you. So, it's worth killing them regardless. And from there, the fight continues this way until either Anzu or you get killed. There is one more spell that gets casted only when there are at least two people or more in the dungeon and that's Cyclone of Fedras, which stuns the target for extra 5 seconds. Also, at the beginning of Fight 3 bird spirit spawns around Anzu, you can heal those with druid hots to gain some bonuses like damage reduction, AoE damage and stuff like that, if I remember correctly. But I'll be entirely honest, I have not used these even during TBC, let alone in Wrath, and I cannot imagine anyone using using them in Cataclysm onward. I am not even sure if they are not gonna be removed in Kata. Either way, it's something you can utilize as druid by casting any druid heal over time on them if you are struggling. Anyway, that's the farm in nutshell. Once done with Anzu, you can Hearthstone if you, this is your main character, or if this is the character that's just farming the Anzu, you can leave him inside the instance, and log back in like 10 minutes, be at the beginning of the dungeon and just walk out. Because when reset comes, sometimes you get teleported to your Hearthstone instead of the nearby graveyard. There are more tricks how to get outside. Or you can do what I like to do, which is just kill the last boss, you can sneak around the mobs, kill the last boss, doors open, walk outside, done. That's about it. Uh, yeah. So good luck farming, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time, where I'm gonna teach you how to farm more rare pets, mounts, and reputations or achievements.